What's up everyone? D Crack here. About to react to another video for you guys. And this video here was recommended by a subscriber here. His name's Mr. Reaction. He's been um He's been asking me for quite a while now to react to a couple videos that he's requested. So I finally have some time. I'm going to go ahead and react to this for you, Mr. Reaction, so I hope you're happy. <laughs> this has four true creepy McDonald's stories. I believe it's by a channel called Blue Spooky. So I'll have a link to original video down below if you want to go check out some of their other videos. Let's go ahead and check this out, guys. The following stories are submitted by users of the Reddit forum Let's Not Meet or from viewers. Some of the following may be from the perspective of women. When I was growing up, my dad and I lived with my grandparents. My parents had me while they were teenagers. My dad got full custody because he lived with my grandparents, and my mom was just living with random friends, going from house to house every few weeks. I was the daughter my grandparents never had, and they doted on me. When I was six, my grandpa passed away from cancer. Oh, ma'am. This story takes place about five months after he passed. This was, I believe, on a Saturday, and my dad was at work. My gram decided to take me to McDonald's for lunch, and like any six-year-old, I was really excited. <laughs> so we go down to the McDonald's that was about a mile and a half from our house, order our lunch, and sit down at a table to eat. At the time, we were the only ones eating inside. About ten minutes after we sit down, though, a scraggly-looking man walks in, orders a meal, and sits down at the table diagonally in front of us to the left. The area we lived in was middle and upper class, so this guy looked pretty out of place. Graham had her back to him, but I could see him perfectly. This man was in at least his mid-fifties, with really wiry, scraggy, and dirty I white hate hair when people sit right in front of you and just stare at you. He had on blue shorts and like, a white go sit somewhere else, bud. Also kind of dirty. And sandals. It's amazing. This happened 21 years ago, but I can remember it like it was yesterday. So I noticed that under the table, this man had something dark, pink, and wrinkly in his lap. And he kept glancing at me and rubbing it every few seconds. In kindergarten, we learned about stranger danger and good touch, bad touch. Oh, uh, was this a pedophile? Which parts of body people weren't supposed to touch. It clicked in my six-year-old head that this man was not supposed to have that out like that, nor be doing what he was doing. Oh, shit. I got really shit. crazy and nervous. I didn't want to tell my gram right then and there because I thought the man might hurt us. If my dad had been there, though, I would have said something because my dad was my hero and could take on anybody. <laughs> Instead, I put my Happy Meal box in front of my face so my view of this guy could be blocked. I had about half of my food left, but at this point I had lost my appetite. Graham asked me if I was full and I just nodded yes. I was, and still am, very petite, so not finishing a full meal was nothing new for me. <laughs> she asked me if I wanted to go play in the play area before we left. But I just shook my head and quietly said, I want to go home. Graham cleared our table, and we left. When we got home, I was still really nervous, and I felt like I was going to throw up. Graham asked me, What's the matter, Munchkin? Her pet name <laughs> for me. And I Munchkin. started crying and told her about the man at the McDonald's and what I saw. My Graham didn't panic or freak or get hysterical. She just hugged me and said, it's all right. Go on to your room and play. I'll she called the police. She wiped my tears, gave me a blueberry Kool-Aid burst, and told <laughs> our dog, Patches, to go to my room with me, which she did. After I was out of earshot, Graham called the McDonald's and told them about this guy. Turns out he was still there. The manager told Graham he'd take care of it and call her back. An hour later, the manager calls back and tells Graham they called the police, who showed up in record time and arrested the guy. <laughs> when the police told the man to stand up. His franken-beans were still hanging out of his shorts. 
The manager also told Grim that she could bring me back for a month's worth of coupons for free Happy Meals. Um, a month's worth? I have another worth? story about a weirdo that Holy happened shit. a few years later. And this time my dad was there. And believe me, what my dad did to him was not pretty. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> Yo, what a pervert. At McDonald's? God damn. I was living in a low-income housing apartment in Minnesota. And at the time, my mom and I simply couldn't afford to have an actual internet provider. And this meant that I leached off of people in my building who had an unprotected wireless connection. <laughs> Whenever their internet connections would go out, I would be forced to walk down to McDonald's in order to use the free Wi-Fi there. This had become a pretty common thing for me. During one of these internet droughts, I was standing about in the lobby of my apartment, about to leave, when the guy who lived next door to me, an older guy named Joe, stops me before I go. He tells me that him and another one of my neighbors were going to McDonald's for coffee, and that he'd buy me one if I went along. I figured, why not? I didn't really know much about Joe, since I mostly kept to myself. Let me explain, Joe. He's a hunchback with a beard gut, and his ZZ Top-esque beard was full of food crumbs that I can only assume were from a McBiscuit. But he seemed like a nice enough guy, so I went along. After a ride in his rickety truck through the Minnesota winter, I was happy to reach the McDonald's. Free Wi-Fi at last. And if Joe held up to his word, a free McAfee as well. I sit down and fire up the laptop to soak in all of that free Wi-Fi. Soon after, Joe comes back with our McCoffees. As soon as he sits down, he starts asking me in a raspy voice. So, boy, ever heard of God's DNA? What? I look up from the Windows loading screen and ask, Um, what? I was totally baffled and thinking, great stuck with another fucking missionary. He goes on to inform me that God's DNA is the molecules that hold the universe together, not to mention it's what makes men genetically superior to women. I sure as shit didn't learn that in physics class, so I blew him off, and when I got the chance, quietly ducked into another booth to browse the internet in peace. He didn't seem to notice, because afterwards, a barrage of freaky beardy lumberjack dudes would come in and out of the McDonald's and talk to him for like 15 minutes at a time. I can only assume they were talking about God's DNA, because I did my best not to pay any attention. But Joe and his gang of weirdos still gave me a very creeped out feeling. I could tell that they kept looking over to stare at me when they thought I wasn't looking. Having had enough weirdness for the night, I decided to duck out when he hobbled off to the bathroom. I assume only to take an epic mix shit. <laughs> I took my chance, folded up the laptop, and headed out to brave the cold Minnesota winter on the way back home. I reckon that having to put up with the elements was still preferable to being around a bunch of weird looking lumberjack creeps. I was almost back to the apartment when I heard the truck slowly rolling up and crunching the snow. I looked over my shoulder and saw Joe in his truck Next to him was another one of those fucking bearded bums from McDonald's. I waved to them, but I got no response. Whatever, I thought. I went home for the night after that creepiness. But then, every night after that, every time I went to McDonald's, either Joe or one of his weirdo lumberjack buddies would be there. I could practically feel them leering at me. What? They always appeared grungy and disheveled forced to go to McDonald's just to use the internet. I tried avoiding them as much as I could. It almost seemed as if they knew ahead of time that I was going to be there. Considering they all had a relationship with Joe, I think it's very much likely that they actually did. Eventually, someone broke into Joe's apartment and stole his bicycle, prompting him to move elsewhere. I learned a couple of things about Joe after he left the apartment such as that he traded most of his food stamps every month for drugs, and that he regularly told women in our apartment that he wanted to leave his body and spirit and ravish them in their sleep, whatever that meant. What? After this point, though, I what saw the creep. McDonald's stalkers only sparingly, and then finally, never again. 
Well, that's creepy. So, I work at a small McDonald's in an even smaller town in the south, and I've encountered many strange people and seen some fucked up things so far. But I saw something today that I thought I would never see and was shocked at how many people didn't notice or didn't care about what was taking place right next to them. I was working behind the counter at around 7 p.m. and we had lots of people on the line, a few children as well. I like kids, so usually I watch them play around in the lobby because they're really cute, but I got distracted by the large amount of customers we had to serve and ignored them for about 15 minutes. I looked back though, when I heard a man ask in a small voice, almost whispering, So, how old are you? I turn around to see this extremely tall guy with a shaved head and red shirt talking to a little girl who looked to be about five or six. Yo! He had a little boy around the same age on his shoulders, who was giggling. They were beautiful children with blonde hair and blue eyes. Fucking pedophile! I saw that they were happy, and that the guy seemed friendly, but something in my head was extremely worried. I had a huge suspicion upon seeing this, that these kids were not his. What grown man would ask a little uh... girl how old she is? And if he so he was there were, messing with the he kids? Already know, why would he care? But after this, he said something that made my heart sink. You should come with me now. Yo! I have a little brother who's six too. Let's go play with him. He then began to walk to the exit with the boy on his shoulders and the girl tagging along. I immediately shot for the door to stop him, just as a lady with blonde hair came out of the bathroom shouting, Hey! Where are you going? Get over here. That's her daughter. The tall guy <laughs> froze with eyes as big as saucers. He was fucking petrified. The lady then scooped up the little girl in her arm and reaches for the boy as the tall guy lets him down, stammering. <laughs> oh, I, I was just playing with your kids. They're really nice kids. I just really like kids. That's a messed All at up once shit. With a nervous smile. The blonde lady then faked a smile back, but still had eyes that clearly said, Stay the fuck away from my children, you fucking creep. But her mouth <laughs> yeah. ended up saying, Oh, well I'm glad you had a nice time, but we need to order now. She then led our kids to the back of the restaurant. The tall guy hurried out of the front exit, and the lady clutched her kids close to her the entire time she was there, even in their booth. If I ever see that guy at work again, I will immediately call the cops on him. Who knows what would have happened to those when kids When I go if to the park or McDonald's or wherever, I don't let my of kids out of my sight. Because shit like this happens. She left her kids unattended in a full restaurant lobby. But no one deserves to lose their children to a disgusting creep with a sick no. grin like that. Oh, man. That's messed up. <sighs> so this is my first post on the sub. A friend finally convinced me to share this story, since she's always teasing me with it. I'm a 23-year-old Is that a McDonald's Florida, bathroom? Fairly introverted, and I hardly get out of the house. And this encounter happened a few months ago. It was about 12 a.m., and I was getting a bit stir-crazy, and needed to get out and just chill with someone. So I texted a special lady friend of mine. We made plans to do our normal routine of hanging out at this nice secluded park. I went and picked her up. We drove past our spawn and spent a couple of hours just chatting about anything and everything. And then she got hungry, so we decided to hop in the car and drive down the road a bit to McDonald's. Go to McDonald's! <laughs> Hooray for 24-7 fast food. And this is where things started getting weird though. We arrived at the McDonald's and went inside instead of through the drive through she ordered her food while I went to the restroom to wash my hands. I'm a bit of a neat freak. I really wish I hadn't gone into the restroom that night. As oh. soon as I walked in, I saw this guy standing at one of those heater dryer things. Alright, not too weird. But then I noticed that he was kind of hunched over at it and wasn't moving. Whatever. I chose to ignore him. Oh, hell no. wash my hands. But then I realized that he's standing at the only dryer in the place. And the damn paper towels are also empty. 
so I awkwardly try to ask the guy if he was done using the dryer. He doesn't respond. Thoroughly creeped out, I just walk out and dry my hands on my shirt. I get out of the restroom and find my friend, and we sit down at a table to eat. Maybe 20 minutes go by, and we're headed back out to the car to go back to our spot. Well, my friend has to use the restroom, so I figure I might as well also. Is that guy still I mean, in surely there? that guy had to be gone by now, right? No. Nope. Wrong. That guy is still standing at the dryer, mumbling something to himself now. I go into the stall and take a leak, and I can hear him hitting the button on the dryer over and over again. Uh. I wash my hands again and don't even attempt to get at the dryer. But the guy moves just as I'm trying to walk past him. He steps back, right in my path, and just looks at me. I notice he's around my age. He just stares at me and says, Excuse me. Uh, okay. I put my head down and quickly say, Pardon me, and rush around him to get out of the restroom. Yo. 30 seconds later, as I'm waiting for my friend to get out of the ladies' restroom, the guy walks out. He just sits down at a table near me and just staring straight at me. Staring is my so friend uncomfortable. My walks out and notices the creep just eyeballing me. She jokingly asks, make a new friend in there? <laughs> I shake my head at her and try to lean her out to the car without making it obvious that I'm wanting to run from the guy. And then he does the weirdest thing. He just starts cackling like a madman. I mean straight up joker laugh. I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, this crazy druggy dude is gonna do something bad. He then just stops suddenly, looks down at my feet, and says, Nice shoes, Osiris. Osiris is a brand of shoe, by the way. I manage to stutter, uh, thanks, and I walk away quickly, out to the car. As my friend and I are getting in, we notice the guy staring at me from inside the McDonald's. Just Yo. straight eyeballing me. Death stare. He then stands up and starts booking it towards us. He wasn't running, but he was like speed walking. He bursts through what both doors hell? of the McDonald's and starts coming right at us. Now he looks angry. That's I pulled out of the parking lot so fast, it's a damn good thing the roads were empty. My friend and I went back to our spot and hung out some more. Every car we saw in the distance... I kept freaking out, expecting it to be that, that weird guy. guy following us. Oh. My friend teased me about it the entire night, and still teases me about it to this day. About how I made friends with the creeper, in the bathroom, who liked my shoes. Yo! What's up guys, Blue Spooky here. Well, all right, guys, that was the four true creepy McDonald's stories by Blue Spooky. Like I said, I'll have a link to the original video down below. And you know what I learned from this video? I think I'm going to stick to drive through. <laughs> I'm not going to go on. There's too many creepy ass people. But yeah, guys, if you like this, make sure and smack the like button and subscribe if you're new. If you have a video you want me to react to, just comment down below. Maybe I'll check it out and go follow me on Twitter. I'll have a link in the description. But until next time, peace.